Worried about the toxic fumes generated while airbrushing in your small office or tiny apartment and looking for a DIY solution? Then stick around. Airbrushing in tight quarters when you don't have access to proper ventilation from those toxic fumes is highly frowned upon and outright dangerous to you and the folks living with you. But when that mountain of unpainted Warhammer figures and unfinished cosplay projects keeps piling up, you just need to get creative. Introducing Airbrush Bucket 2.0, a slightly upgraded take on a clever build I first saw from fellow creator Barbatos Rex. His original setup is smart, but after building it myself, I found a few spots that could use some love. For instance, installation could be cleaner, safety could be tighter, and maintenance was kind of a hassle. But that said, the core idea was solid, so I made a few key upgrades to dial in the performance and give myself a little peace of mind. Now, if you're just here for the download link and assembly instructions, skip to the timestamp on the screen. But if you want the why behind the changes, keep watching. Let's start with the original design. You cut a hole in the lid, stick a tube in, seal it with silicone, fill the bucket with water, drill a few vent holes, and wrap the lid with carbon pool filters. In theory, great. In practice, some problems. That seal around the tube, usually done with silicone, is messy and hard to get airtight. And if air is leaking out, so are the fumes. Then there's how the pool filters connect to the bucket. Let's just say it's questionable, which isn't great considering it's literally the most important part of the setup. So with those issues identified, I opened up Shaper 3D and made a few adjustments. First, I redesigned the intake with a 3D printed screw top collar. That gives a clean solid seal to the vent tube. And on the bottom, I added a lip. So sealing with silicone would be easier and foolproof. Then I created custom holders for real HAPA Plus carbon filters, the kind used in Bamboo Labs P1S printer. So they are easy to source and swap in and out. No jury rigging necessary. Hell, I even added little shims to the lids so the filters don't lift up from the air pressure. Small touch, big impact. And as you may have noticed, the pipe that extends down is a separate piece, allowing for a simpler and cleaner 3D print that will always be the same distance from the water line. Now for the bucket, I tried every paint bucket I can get my hands on. Home Depot, Amazon, you name it. Most of them don't seal properly. The best ones, food grade buckets with a rubber gasket in the lid. That's what I'm using now and it makes a huge difference. So to recap, with a better exhaust connection, a proper silicone seal, consistent distance to the water line, and an airtight bucket lid and real HAPA Plus carbon filters, this setup actually does what it's supposed to do. All that gross air from your booth goes straight into the water. No leaks, no shortcuts. The only way out is through legit filtration. No bootleg hacks here. And yeah, Someone's gonna ask, do I really need carbon filters? Buddy, those fumes you're smelling, those are VOCs, and they can cause headaches, dizziness, and make your lungs feel like you've been huffing paint behind the 7-Eleven. This was the best idea ever. <laughs> Breathe that in long enough, and suddenly your fun little hobby becomes a science experiment, and you're the test subject. So yes, carbon filters are a non-negotiable. And for those of you wondering, aren't those HEPA filters overkill since the paint hits the water? Look, technically you're not wrong. If all the overspray stays in the water, then yes, HEPA filtration wouldn't be necessary. But here's the catch. Fine particles can bounce, swirl, or straight up ride the airflow right past the surface before settling. HEPA filters give you a backup layer just in case something sneaks through. So how do you get started? Well, first download the STL and open it up in your slicer of choice. I'm using Bamboo Studio on a P1S, which gives me a max print area of 256 millimeters cubed. And in case you're wondering, yes, this print file is wall to wall. So if your print area is smaller than that, tough noogies. As for supports, I'm using the default settings, nothing fancy, but hey, if you've got better support settings that work for you, drop them in the comments and let the rest of us level up. Once you have all the pieces printed, here's what you'll need for assembly jeweler's pliers, and a small rotary sander to clean off all that support gunk. A five gallon bucket with a rubber sealed lid. A drill with a four inch hole saw. A Dremel to make the rectangular cuts. Some silicone sealant. Four HEPA plus carbon filters. Mine are from AliExpress. Some PLA glue. I recommend Gloop. 
And yeah, you're probably going to want to wear a face mask and eye protection. You're cutting plastic and bits will absolutely shoot up in your face and all over your workspace. So please don't skip this part. It's really important. Step one. Place your 3D print or the cutting template I provided on top of the lid and trace the holes with a black marker. Step two, cut them out using your hole saw and Dremel or whatever sharp weapons of choice you're using. If you're using a hole saw, run the drill backwards so you get a cleaner cut, trust me. Step three, lay down silicone around each hole, then place the 3D print back on the lid. I like to smear a little extra around the edges just in case something doesn't seal properly. You've got backup coverage then. Step four, press it down and let it cure. Give it a full 24 hours. Be patient here. It's totally worth it. Step five, flip the lid upside down. Take your 3D printed pipe, add PLA glue around the edge and gently but firmly press into the intake hole until it's fully seated. Let that cure for another 24 hours too. Glue basically wells the plastic so you get an airtight seal. Step six, drop in the filters and cap them off with the included lids. And step seven, fill your bucket with about two inches of water, pop the lid on and attach your exhaust hose to the top. Boom, you are done and happy airbrushing. Now, before you run off and start airbrushing like a maniac, let's talk about some safety tips. This setup is optimized for water-based acrylics and yes, it helps trap a lot of the junk, but let's be crystal clear. You still need to wear a proper mask. No matter what paint you're using, even the safe acrylics, you're still atomizing fine particles and chemicals into the air. And the biggest failure point in this whole system is right at the source. The few inches between your airbrush and the intake of your booth. The filters and water trap help with what's already made it into the bucket, but you still need to protect yourself at the front end. So be smart, use a proper respirator, one rated for paint fumes, not some random cloth mask. I would also invest in a proper filtration system like the Blue Air 411 iMax, which handles rooms up to 526 square feet. It filters out VOCs and fine particles with a HEPA Silent Plus filter. And with that, we are at the end of another episode. Love it, hate it. Let me know all about it in the comments section below. Curious about all the gear and the print files? You can also find those in the details section of this video. But more importantly, hit that like, subscribe, and bell so you're notified when I drop another new episode. Catch you guys next time.